You don't choose the elf life. The elf life chooses you. Hello my lovely friends, it's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming at you with some fantasy recommendations. So for those of you that are new to my channel, you may not know or maybe you do and that's why you're here watching this video, I have a TBR game named Fablin. And one of the things that happens in that TBR game is you choose a fantasy species and that species determines a genre of book that you have to, you have to like read one of those books every single month. So today I'm recommending seven books for all kinds of people who are interested in reading fantasy. I have some for those of you that are just getting started. I have some for those of you that read some but would like to read more. And I have some for those of you that are like me and like you were raised on it. Like your parents had you reading Lord of the Rings at the age of 12. I see you. You are my people. I will have timestamps down in the description box. If you want a part two, let me know in the comments. I would be more than happy to recommend more books. It's I'm, I'm here. I'm a booktube channel. It's what I do. So for those of you that really don't read a lot of fantasy, like the last time you read a fantasy book, it was like when you were eight and your mom was actually reading it to you. All of these I did try to tie into genres that maybe people already are reading. When you're breaking into a genre, it helps to have something that is similar to something you're already familiar with so that you're not having to bridge quite as much of a gap. I've been reading fantasy since I was a kid and my brain still will sometimes do a big old skip when I'm having to go from one genre to like a really dense high fantasy novel. It takes me a minute to get into it. So start out with something that's already going to be a little bit familiar. It will make reading it a little bit easier. So the first recommendation that I have for my newbies is Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This is a YA romance based on Korean mythology that has a lot of elements of K-dramas in it. I have a full review of all of the reasons that I love it. I will have that linked up top. It is about a boy and a girl who basically end up having to go on, the, not a quest, but like end up having to solve the issue of the fact that she has lost her soul in trying to save him and she needs that back. The reason that I think this would be really good for beginning fantasy readers is because it is so like married to the modern world. Yes, there's a lot of Korean mythology in here and Kat Cho does such a wonderful job of marrying that to the modern world, but we're also dealing with two kids who are in a regular high school setting. Anyone who's ever read like a, a high school manga or watched a high school anime, you're gonna find this is going to be right up your alley. If you are someone who likes angsty, YA, school setting type of books, this will be a really good book for you. The next book that I want to talk about is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I do want to say right off the bat, huge trigger warning for suicide. Just like from the beginning, the premise is very much tied up in the fact that the main character commits suicide. So just if you are not in a good place for that, skip this one. However, it is a really good, wonderful, moving book about a woman who ends up caught, I guess, basically in limbo and she gets the chance to live out different decisions in her life and see what would have happened if she had made a different choice. The reason I think that this would be really good for fantasy newbies is because one, it is basically a contemporary or like literary fiction. It's really just about her living multiple lives and the fantasy element is there to facilitate that. You're not having to wrap your head around a whole lot of world building. You're not having to wrap your head around huge like great epic struggles going on between multiple countries. You're just in this one character's head dealing with her life and her decisions. And my third recommendation for fantasy newbies, and this kind of bridges the gap between fantasy newbie and people who have read fantasy but want to get more into it. That is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. This is about Elizabeth and she is a girl who lives in a magical library until one day something goes wrong with that library and it is up to her to save that and quite possibly her world. This is really good if you are a historical fiction reader. This felt very much like some Victorian historical fiction that I've read. Like she's not in England or anything like that, but a lot of the themes, a lot of the societal structures are very reminiscent of that. This one is pretty simple. Margaret Rogerson does a really good job of just quick, effective world building. She's not going to immerse you in like a thousand page treatise on a fantasy world. Her stuff is very character driven and the world is there to facilitate the characters and the plot versus there to kind of be something the reader is taking, like keeping track of. I really think that if you are new to fantasy and you're getting into it and you want something that's a little bit more fantastical, you want something that's not in our real world but still feels like the real world, read this one. Now we're moving on to people who are like, I guess tier two or step two in their fantasy reading journey. These recommendations are for people who have read some fantasy. Maybe you've read some of the classics and you're trying to find stuff that is more up your alley. Again, I'll give you the same recommendations that I gave the newbies, which is, find something that's like something that you've already enjoyed and already read. Um, but also 
don't be afraid to branch out. Once you have kind of a grasp and a little bit of an understanding of the tropes that are in fantasy and the, the, the norms of the genre, stuff like that, you can really like sit down and go, okay, here's what I like and you can find more stuff that is like that. This first recommendation is going to be for my readers who like just want a good romance. These are both for people who want a good romance in their fantasy because I'm me. <laughs> so the first one that we're going to be talking about is Song of the Crimson Flower by Julie C. Dow. This is great for those of you that want to get like in a fully immersive fantasy world, but you look at Brandon Sanderson and you go, that is terrifying. This is about Lan and Bao and it's just kind of a cross-country journey of them trying to fix a curse that has been placed on Bao. Julie C. Dow's world building is very fast and effective. She is able to fit a whole bunch of world building and character and plot into a very like relatively short novel. This is barely I think 300 pages. It is not even 300 pages. It's 200 and something. So for those of you that like you want something like that but it's daunting you can definitely read this. I will say it does spoil the like main pairing of the series before because it's in the same world but like the series before is a Snow White retelling. We all know how that is going to end. This is another one that's really good if you like historical fiction. There are some elements of this that tie in to Chinese history especially in regards to the opium trade. There's not a lot of it in this book but it really does get into just the damage opium did. So it's it's really fast, character driven, really engaging plot. Like you're just gonna be flying through this book. The next book that I want to talk about is Song of Blood and Stone by L. Penelope. This is for my romance readers because this is like it's a fantasy book but it is primarily focused on the romance. This is about two people who kind of are trying to prevent the takeover of their country by another country that has been at war with theirs for a very very long time. There's a lot of subterfuge, a lot of spy stuff, so if you like spy novels this might be good for you. This has really great compelling world building. It's slightly steampunkish. I really enjoyed that facet of it and it puts, I feel, equal focus on like being a fantasy world and the fantasy plot and along with the romance plot between the two main characters and building the relationship between them and also like their two separate struggles. I really liked how all of that was handled and worked into the plot. These last two books are for the people who have been reading fantasy for the longest time. Like you don't remember a time when you did not read fantasy. You were always searching for new interesting magic systems and world building and all of that good stuff. The first one I want to talk to you about is Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. This has been billed as Game of Thrones meets the Gladiator. I can definitely, having watched neither of those at all just knowing multiple references from pop culture definitely can see like the mix between the two. This is an African inspired fantasy about a boy who is on this revenge quest to avenge the death of his father. Think Inigo Montoya but just like with way more trauma or at least way more trauma that we see on page in the actual story. I really enjoyed Evan Winter's world building around this, the way that the magic system is caught up in these dragons. I really thought that that was interesting and realistic. Um, I also, there was some some elements that our main character gets into as far as the magic system that kind of threw a wrench in some of the works and I really liked how those two work together and, and interplay. This is really good if you are looking for a very character driven novel, character driven plot because Tao is the one that is his like his determination, his drive, his goals are the thing that is pushing this entire story forward. And then the final recommendation that I have for y'all is, I mean technically it is listed as sci-fi. I still have not figured out where that comes from. I see it as more of a fantasy but like if you need to use it as a sci-fi recommendation I'm not like keeping track of what you're doing. That is going to be Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This follows four different points of view circling around this kind of eclipse that is going to be happening. It is a very powerful event for the city that we are going to. I think this is great if you're one of those people that like you like to sit there while you're reading your plot and figure out what the heck is going on. Like you're sitting there going, I want to know, I have so many questions. And I have so many theories and I need to finish this book because I need to know if I'm right. If you are like me in that regards, this is a fantastic book for you because there is so much going on and figuring out how all of the pieces are going to fit together is just was such a fun moment for me. Just like trying to go, okay, well, how is all of this going to work together? What's going on here? I really enjoyed that aspect of it. This is also very character driven. Like they all have a central goal and they're all having to, to like be around this central plot but 
the characters again are the ones that are driving the stories. I would love to know in the comments if you're feeling chatty, are you, where are you as far as fantasy goes as a genre? Do you read a lot of it? Are you brand new? Do you wish you read more of it but you don't read a lot? I would love to know that. And then wherever you are on your fantasy genre journey, I would love to know if you have any recommendations for fantasy. If you are not feeling chatty but you still want to let me know that you watched to the end of the video, go ahead and leave me a fairy emoji. If you're new here, you've never heard of Fable before, you're going, Margaret, what the heck is this TBR game crap that you're talking about? I will have a video over here where you can check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a, a thumbs up. Also if you enjoyed this video I will have a like thing of all my book reviews. Some of these books are on in those book reviews so go ahead and check that out if you enjoyed this video. That is it for now my friends. Happy reading and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy nerdy things. Bye!